Welcome back to 23rd Garage. We are back to work today on the Cadillac. Now the reason why we jump back on the Cadillac is because we do not have a couple of pieces for the Infinity, so we cannot finish that off. And we wanna let the F80 M3 cure a little bit more before we start putting it back together. As you guys know, we do have a bit of an issue with the clear coat on that car, and we are trying to figure that out. So we're going to give it some time, let it dry out, possibly even sand it down and let it gas off a little bit better. But in the meantime, we're going to buff out this Cadillac real nice, get it looking like glass. That way we can go ahead and give it back to the customer. But before we do that, Vlad has a little issue over there. He locked his keys in the car or in a customer's car. And luckily, thanks to Nate, <laughs> yeah. thanks to Nate, Nate for locking the keys in the Yukon the other day, I now own my very own Slim Jim set. Now, we're not going to have to actually use the Slim Jim because watch this. Check this out. The trunk is open. Okay. And the trunk is open. And uh, the seat is, the, uh, the little portal in the seat is open. So, I mean, if I was small enough, I could hop in there and crawl through there. But since we can't, we're just going to use the arm. You're there, bro. You're on it. There you go. Just pull. That's it. Uh -uh. That easy? That was easy, bro. This thing right here is actually very handy. Look, that's already saved us what? Two. Two, two cars. And I paid $81 for this thing at O'Reilly's. So. Yeah, I mean, $81 is the price of a locksmith at that point. Literally. Yeah, I think, well, I think a locksmith is from anywhere from $50 to $100, depending on what kind of vehicle you have and how far away from the central office yeah. of the locksmith you are. So. $81 to already have opened two cars without making a single nick or damage to the vehicle. That's pretty good. And on this one, we got lucky because these right here are actually pretty hard to get into without jacking them all up. So let's get back to work. All right, so I am going to go get some sandpaper because we do need sandpaper and we do not keep sandpaper in stock because of obvious reasons. Dog, you, you're trying to be part of the video. Come here, come here. Come here, buddy. Yo, we didn't have it in the last video. Tell them, tell them where we found this dog. Okay, so yesterday we came across this little pup and uh, he actually had a huge knot on the side of his face. Like right here, it's already gone down. And he was flinching really bad. And he, like, you can see how scared he is. Uh, any kind of loud noises or when you raise your voice, he will freak out and run. And like, and he wouldn't eat, he was scared to eat. So that tells me that somebody abused him. He's not He's like scared. Not scared anymore. But it was crazy, dude, he had a huge knot on the side of his head. Like somebody kicked him. I promise you, they kicked him, bro. Oh. They kicked you, buddy. Did they hurt you? Did they hurt you, buddy? Did they hurt you? Hmm? Did they hurt you? Yeah, they did, those bastards. It's all good, you're safe now. All that. right, so I'm gonna go get the sandpaper and Nate is actually going to reinstall these pieces right here. Uh, the reason why we want to go ahead and reinstall them is because we risk damaging them if we don't. You can see where they are. Uh, we need to take everything out of this trunk. We still have a few pieces of paint in there. They're not going to be in the way and they may need some buffing themselves. So we will, he's going to, he's going to reinstall these pieces and the dog's going to keep crying because he wants attention and I'm going to go get the sandpaper. All right, so I just got back from CarQuest and I went ahead and got a new uh, foam compounding pad because, you know, obviously it's a pretty big job and we need a new pad. I've got some 1,000 here to start sanding. Very nice. And then I've got 1,500 for after the 1,000 and then I've got 2,500 to finish it off right before the buffing. And then also I got two new Duroblocks because why not? And then, this thing right here, the spec out nib file. This is the mo the thing that I'm excited about most. I've never used one of these. I've always seen them in there. Uh, I read right here, you see it shows a defect, clear coat, base coat, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it removes runs and dirt nibs and is hone tips of teeth shave without digging in. So what we were doing with the razor blade is essentially what this thing is designed to do. And hopefully, I'll learn how to use it without ruining something. So we'll see how it does. Sure. Give me a net. All right. Hey, it actually knocked it off. Knocked that one off. Here, and there, and there, and there, <laughs> and there. And there. 
Now, the reason why, hold on for one second. The reason why you want to use a nib or uh, a razor blade or something, because uh, as you sand, if you try to sand something out, you're going to sand the area around it as well at the same time. So by the time you take out your defect, you're possibly going to sand through the area that had no defect. So these are really useful things to use. You got these pieces mounted. Yuri's already been sanding a little bit, but he's over here. What are you doing, Yuri? Oh, remember this bumper? What? You got it fixed. Nate, Nate took care of the scratch right there. Yeah, and then Paul burned it in. So now I am going to finish buffing the edges. As you can see, he did an excellent transition. He only painted right here, yeah? Yeah, only painted from this line right here up. Well, the only paint was here, but clear coat was yeah, down to yeah. this line. So now, look, as you can see, I've got it all buffed out. That's a out. perfect match, really too. really good. Honestly, you can't and, even tell. Uh, but yeah, I just need to finish buffing this out real quick, and then... Uh, I'm just going to back, hop back on the Cadillac. Yeah, I'm going to call him up. He's going to come pick it up. We're going to get our money, and then we'll jump back on the Cadillac. We actually have a nasty little surprise on the Cadillac. We have to repaint one of the doors. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. My man's uh, Paul. It's got to clear over, yeah? Well, I mean, you're going to need paint in that spot where it got sanded through. So, it's not a big deal, but... And that's the thing, like, for me, these jobs that have a lot to do with painting, it's not, it's not easy for me because I'm not a painter. So, I'm outsourcing a lot. And I'm doing a lot of stuff myself, so I'm I'm messing stuff up. And then when you outsource something to somebody else, you're taking them away from something that they're doing and putting them on something else that they're not responsible for. So it's really hard to focus on all these different things. So that's why stuff tends to happen. But look at this. This thing is absolutely beautiful, you know? Looks perfect. We, did, we took a damaged, destroyed bumper that he would have had to send back, and we fixed it for him, and we charged him only, what, 75 bucks? You got the bumper on. What do you Man, think? Man, it looks good, bro. It looks really good. Yes, sir. I think hey, I think Dad actually needs our help real quick. What's he trying to do? Uh, what you need, boss? Hook back, hook. Hook back, hook. Yeah. Why is why is hook him? Why is hook him? Ah. Ah, oh, broke my finger now. Mm. Okay. You pay? I try. What's the shit that I sent in your necklace? That's nice. I like that. Brand That's new hood? That's usually how I operate. Very nice, sir. Very nice indeed. Indubitably, you said. So check out how flat we got this clear coat right here. We got all the runs out of this quarter panel here. Uh, we might sand a little bit up here. I don't think we need to. It, it looks really good. I, I kind of want to stay away from any edges, but that looks really good. We're not going to do this door because we have to repaint it. We did sand through it. No big deal. Paul got this door looking nice and flat. And Paul actually using a really cool method here. Uh, tell us what you were doing, Paul. Well, I took a 1500 on an interface pad for the DA. You hit it as, mu as much as you can, as evenly as possible. Then go over a, with a block at a 2500. And then we've also got a 3000 on an interface, interface pad. And once you do that, you've got it to a very nice flat surface that's going to be easy to actually polish out. There's not any major scratches, all very minor and fine, so it's going to be easy to, to buff. All right. The I'm dog agrees. The dog agrees. The dog likes the progress on the vehicle. He's just chilling, too. So uh, while Paul is doing some of the sanding over here, I'm actually going to go over there and weld a couple of brackets for uh, Vlad and Mark over at Motorhead. And uh, yeah, kind of a lot of distractions today. Also, another really good news actually, check this out, come here. We're not going to jump back onto this car today simply because my ADHD is not going to allow that. But uh, we got the piece that we've been waiting on. Guys, you won't even believe how much this costs at the I almost said dealership, but at this point, it's dealership. This piece right here, drop in the comment section below what you think this piece costs. And don't be don't be going over there and looking it up if you're like a car guy or something. Just just try to guess. That, that's what that's what will make this fun. Just try to guess because I guarantee you, you're not going to get it. So uh, I will give you one hint. Dad wants me to save that side. <laughs> so that should tell you something. Uh, another thing Dad told me today, uh, 
also is that he never got the core support. So he basically tricked me into getting this car on the rack. Like, there's a rule that dad has. No car is allowed onto the rack unless every part to do the frame is here. And lo and behold, his car magically gets on the rack somehow. But it's okay, uh, core support should be here tomorrow. Uh, this piece is here. I'm going to save that piece because if you look closely, right there, let them check that out. It's really not that bad. It's just bent in half. Okay, it's supposed to kind of have curves and shapes to it. Once I pull this out right here, that's going to come back out, no problem. So hopefully tomorrow we can have that, we will have the radiator support. If we don't have the radiator support, I'm still going to go ahead and do it because at having this piece right here and having the rebar, I'll still be able to set up the square. I don't necessarily need the core support. It's good to have, and I almost never weld the frame rail without having the core support, but it's possible to do. So we'll probably end up doing that. Like I said, a lot of distractions today, but it's okay. So I'm gonna go over there and weld these brackets up for them, and then we'll jump back on the scan. Check it out. So I got it all welded up. Now all Mark has to do is uh, cut these sides off, and then I'll weld up these edges. And uh, then once he gets everything sanded down, painted, we'll come back and show you guys what it looks like once they install it back on the car. But for now, back on the Cadillac. Check it out guys, so this is what, first first pass is yes. the cut with the cutting pad? The compound. With the compound, and it just, it looks perfect. It's not 100% flat, but you can't get it 100% flat. You'll get it basically looking like this, and uh, so what is this, three more, two more steps, right? Yeah, two more steps. So this is just the first step right here, and it's already looking really good. Like, I can see myself in it, I don't see any imperfections, everything is nice and it's like, it's like a show car finish almost. And that's only the first, the cut. So imagine what it's going to look like once we actually do the one, two, and three steps, uh, which is what? Oh yeah, the blue pad. I have to get, do I have to get a blue pad too? Yeah, blue and a uh, black. So a blue and a black pad. Okay. Black Yo, check it out. I put on this uh, chrome piece right here. Dang, that looks good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nate's buttoning this thing up. So check it out, we grinded all the welds down and Mark actually went ahead and sprayed them. They look really good, so tomorrow he is going to install them and uh, we'll show you guys what it looks like in the next video. And why we actually did it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I already explained actually why we did it, but you are actually going to see firsthand in the next video why we had to do that. And then, you know, probably in like a year or two, uh, we'll know if it flew off and hit somebody's car. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe even in a couple of days, I don't know. Nah. Uh, I don't know how much downforce that wing gives, but I did some solid welds on that, and I, I have the utmost confidence in those welds. So I think it's going to be okay. okay back to the cat. I am going to try buffing again. I haven't buffed in a long time. I used to buff all the time because I used to paint, and I used to have to buff everything I painted. So, uh, do have some experience buffing, but that does not necessarily mean that I'm good at buffing. Okay, so we'll see what happens. You guys hear that? Okay. Right. Well, we're gonna have to make him do it if he's a professional. Right. Mr. Professional, why don't you come over here? Why don't you come over here and do this? If you want, I, I show you. Hi. <clears throat> what did I do, sir? What sent it was paper sent. This is, I uh, did this with the 2500. 25? Yeah. No, you did. What, 3,000? Yeah, 5,000. It's black. It's black and you need 5,000. 5,000? Yeah. It's More black. like you need to give me 5,000. Wow. All right, so what you want to do is when you get the paste on there, you want to rub your paste in to the surface of the clear coat. That way it activates. Do like a, like a one foot by one foot area, I think. And then uh, probably open this door. No, Nate? You can open it. Pull on it. I'm gonna open this door that way I don't catch that edge. And hopefully I won't fill the car up with rubbing compound. But you want the rubbing compound to sit on the surface for about 30 seconds before you actually start working it.
So we've done a bit of cutting here and it's, it's starting to look really good. Uh, basically just need to do the entire quarter like that. So uh, since dad's such a professional, I'm gonna make him do it. But he's probably not gonna be anywhere to be seen. <laughs> he just likes to say he's a professional. There he is. But uh, I'm gonna try to buff out this entire quarter panel for you guys just to showcase my professional buffing skills. And then we'll see what happens. Hopefully I don't burn through or mess it up. Hey dog, dog, he's hungry. Where's he eating? He's hungry, I'm gonna feed him. Man, bro, I, I don't even know. I don't think buffing is my thing, man. Like, look, I, I mean, I don't know. You guys be the judge. That's my first pass right there. I mean, it looks good on camera. There's nothing you can say about that. Oh, well, I don't know. If it looks good on camera, then I'm a pro. I did a professional job. It's done. He's ready to pick it up. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I think I actually burned through right here, bro. Really? I ain't gonna lie. Why do you say that? Because it looks like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, it kind of does. Right there, look. But I don't know, I've done that before on a black car and it buffed right out too and there was nothing there. So maybe it's not a burn through. Either way it goes. Uh, you burned it, but it didn't burn all the way through. Yeah, it'll, it will be corrected either way. Like in the end, the customer will be happy. Even if I have to bend over backwards to get this thing done, the customer will be happy. And for us, that's the most important thing is for the customer to be happy. Also, another thing we want to do is if you look under there, we have a busted pitman arm. And this car is just absolutely impossible to roll around without any steering. So I want to tack that on there real quick, just so we have steering in case we have to move it. Because last time when we were trying to move this car, it was just impossible. Uh, I do not know how to use this HT poop. So whatever it's set to is probably what I'm going to use. Oh, there, there just we go. Just crank it all the way up, man. When in doubt, wind it out. And the more grease you have, the better. And then... <laughs> yeah, I usually grease up my welds. Yeah, I, used to, I, I usually them. grease them up real good because, you know, you, it, you can't weld without a good grease job. No, sir. Got to twist it. It's kind of dark in here. Maybe when you start welding, we can see. There we go. Real note, need to make sure we don't start a fire. Word. Alright, so we are going to let it down super slow. I thought she's going to drop it with some diesel style. Dude, do you know how much I want to do that? Yo, please be careful. Nice. Uh, right. Go test the steering out. Hey, for the first time in two years, this car is sitting on four wheels with steering. That's that's a lot. That's saying a lot. I think more than two years, maybe. Maybe maybe more than two years, but two at least a year and a half that I've had it. Yes, sir. Yeah, the steering works. Is just that uh, the only way that you want to steer this vehicle is when you're moving it, because when you're moving it. The wheels will transfer the weight. As the wheels transfer the weight, it'll be easier to steer. The reason why that broke is because somebody sat there and tried to turn that wheel before the car was moving. So you don't want to do that at all. That actually happened on the 550 too. Remember that? When I pulled into the lot and the steering broke? It broke? It, it completely came out. I lost steering. Look, me and Alec boosted up the freeway through the east ridge tunnel and then came back and lost steering right there that's right crazy the that is crazy yeah. but okay guys that is going to be it for this video we didn't get much car stuff done today as you guys seen i had a lot of distractions going on today but we have this car sitting on its wheels and uh this side is pretty much buffed we've got this door buffed the fender's buffed this door right here as you guys know we will have to repaint it no big deal we'll take care of that uh <laughs> 
my quarter panel, it's almost done. Tomorrow I'm gonna do a second pass on it, so this side will be done besides the door. Uh, the back is all buttoned up. And I know the car's really dusty, but we don't wanna touch the car unless we're actually washing it. So like, whoever did this right here, when I find you, I'm going to rub your face into that. Probably naked. But that right there scratches the car. So you don't ever wanna touch a, a dusty vehicle. So that's why it's dusty. It's not gonna hurt the car for the dust to sit on it, but when you start wiping it off or messing with it, it will. And I know it's just gonna get dusty again, so I'm not gonna sit here and clean this car every day. But this side right here, very happy with this side. The only runs that we have are right here. I started using my nib filer on here. And guys, I have to say, if you are thinking about buying this right here, send the money to me or flush it down the toilet. That's all I'm gonna say. Because this thing right here is a piece of junk and there is no logical use for it. Even for tiny little nibs, it's horrible. Like, it's literally a steel file. It's literally a bunch of curved, a bunch of curved razor blades on a piece of metal. It's stupid, it doesn't even make any sense. But whatever, you know, you live and you learn. It's a small price to pay for knowledge. But anyways, we'll get the rest of these runs out tomorrow. And then uh, most of this, side is like it's perfect there's not even any dirt in it so uh i don't know if we're going to be back on this car tomorrow because dad did get all the parts well most of the parts for the infinity so i'm hoping to knock that out tomorrow and maybe i can uh outsource this to paul or somebody but probably not anyways that's going to be it for this video if you enjoyed the content hit that like button if you haven't already go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also check us out on instagram at 23rd bottom slash garage and i'll see you guys in the next episode peace out